Pop singer Madonna rose to stardom through New York's nightclub circuit in the 80s, and by the middle of the decade she would become a sex symbol and have countless hits on MTV, despite being a lightning rod for the family values types. During one of her tours in the mid 80s, she chose to have an up and coming rap trio known as the Beastie Boys open up for her. It was a strange choice given how different their music and onstage antics were. Let's find out what happened in today's video. In 1985, Madonna would head out on her first major tour. Titled Like a Virgin, she graduated from playing small clubs like CBGB's and was now headlining arenas. Her manager would end up calling Russell Simmons and asked one of his artists to open for her on tour. It's been reported that originally Madonna wanted a comedy rap trio named The Fat Boys to open for her, but the problem was that Simmons didn't represent the rap trio, but wanting to keep her on the phone, he pretended to represent them anyways, and he allegedly told her they were booked for another tour. Instead, Instead, he offered the rap group Run DMC, but Madonna's people thought they were too expensive. So he offered the Beastie Boys instead. Now the Beastie Boys at this point in time only had a handful of songs to call their own, so they were a bargain to Madonna. She agreed, and the tour was set in motion. Madonna's fans universally hated the Beastie Boys. The opening day to the tour started out at Seattle's Paramount Theatre. Madonna and the Beastie Boys would play three dates there, and the plan was to graduate to playing arenas after that. But the Beastie Boys almost got canned from the tour after those dates were done due to the audience's poor reaction to their 30 minute set. Madonna's management wanted to fire the Beastie Boys, but the pop star would refuse to kick them off the tour since she counted herself a fan. Beastie Boys member Ad Rock would tell Jamie Fallon in 2015, we played the first couple shows and they hated us. She realized that the audience hated us so much that by the time she got on stage, it was the greatest thing ever. Also joining the Beastie Boys on the early part of the tour was Rick Rubin, who was also known as DJ Double R, but after the first week, he had to fly back to New York City and never came back. He would admit years later that he was suffering from an ear infection and doctors had warned him not to go on the tour, especially if they were choosing to fly, as he could have permanent damage to his hearing. Some Beastie Boys fans have cast doubt on whether that explanation is true or not, because for most of the tour, the Beastie Boys rented a Lincoln Continental to get them from city to city, and they opted not to bring a change of clothes, instead wearing the same clothes for the whole tour. During an after party at one show in Los Angeles, the Beastie Boys allegedly crashed Madonna's after party and hung out with celebrities who had no idea who they were. The Virgin Tour would end in 1985 with a five night residency in New York that was split between Madison Square Garden and Radio City Music Hall. During her last performance with the Beastie Boys, they came on stage at the end of Madonna's performance and soaked her with a water gun. One year later, the Beastie Boys would release 1986's License to Ill. It would go on to become the biggest selling rap album of the decade, and throughout the next 20 years, the Beastie Boys would become one of the biggest and most influential rap groups in history. Ad Rock would look back at the tour telling Spin Magazine in 1998, it's not like any of us knew Madonna that much, but we were used to hanging at Danceteria Club, so we knew of each other. I don't know why she thought it was a good idea for us to open that tour. It was a terrible idea. We were booed every night on stage and hit with beer bottles. In the same issue of Spin Magazine, Madonna was also interviewed, where she defended the Beastie Boys saying, they were very bad boys. They said the F word on stage all the time, the audience always booed them, and they told them to F off. I loved them for that. I couldn't understand why everybody hated them. I thought they were so adorable. I think I made out with Adam Yauk once in the dressing room. That does it for today's video guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.